So this is the inlay critter. Uh, generally costs about sixty dollars, and this is how you uh, get on rope. You take it, put it through the big head, clip on the carabiner, of course, lock it, and this is how you add friction. You can put it through the arm like this, or you can put it up the leg, or you want extra, you can put it on the arm. This is a Sterling ATS. Uh, generally costs about $50 for aluminum, 150 for a stainless steel version. So to get on rope, same thing as a critter. Put it through the big head. Click onto a carabiner, lock it. And you can add friction by putting through the top horn. You can set it up like this too what's the difference between an ats and a critter they're both symmetrical and they both have the arms and leg thingy and look pretty similar um, mechanically uh, physically but um the difference is critter is flat you can flip it around and uh, if one side is worn down, you flip it around and use the other side. So it's pretty much like two descenders in one. ATS though, because of the convex concave design, you're going to want to use it one way. So um, generally people put the convex side up so you get more roll friction on the metal. This is a BG Gear Squirrel, generally costs around $40 to $50. It is one of the more popular descending device. Some people like it because the, all the friction adjustments were all off to one side. So this is how it works. You take a bite of the row, pass it through the big hole and clip it like you do with the others. So to adjust friction, you can do the first setting, pop it in, second setting, pop it in, and now you got a lot of friction going on. So to take off friction, pop, pop, there you go. Uh, the descent disadvantage of Squirrel is it is um, as of version three, you can't really use it with double strand because all these notches are too little for two strands of ropes. This is a Peso Piranha. It was very popular a couple years ago, but one of the model is currently on recall right now. So the one with the narrower mouthpiece right here tend to get rope jammed in it. But anyway, this is how you get on rope. Over carabiner, you can add friction by doing this or from the top or go down and up. Then that gives you a lot of friction. This is a classic descending vise. This is a figure eight. It's simple metal in order to absorb a lot of heat. But the main disadvantage is it doesn't have a lot of adjustments for friction. Scouts, because it is so cheap, generally costs under $20. This is a Mamad Nano 8. It has been discontinued, but I still want to show it because it is so cute. You can actually buy something similar to this, such as Rock Exotic Micro 8. Um, it you, was designed for mountaineers whose main purpose is not to go down canyons, but you know they can repel if they need to. They use very small rope, like the 6 mm, uh, millimeter, thread it through. Clip into a carabiner and you can friction adjust by going over the top or down, up, down, or like this. This is a personal escape survival eight from SMC. It is very light and compact and can be used with very small ropes, as little as six millimeters. It doesn't offer much for frictional adjustment so I can use the same technique 
Got the carabiner on the leg loop. Like a figure A. And this is commonly used by uh, rescuer and firefighters because it's so easy to carry. This is a rock exotic totem. It comes in aluminum or titanium. Most people seem to use it as for a contingency rope breaking rather than use it as a descender. So one of the ways you can use this as a descending device is to use it similar to a figure eight. Get it through the big hole. And up the little one. And you clip it to your carabiner and lock it. Now, one thing it has uh, advantage over figure eight is you can actually add more friction by pulling this up and pop it over like this. I'm going to show you the throttle mode. You take a by of the row through one of these uh, holes in stitch plate. You clip it on your carabiner, lock it. Now you can just repel with it. If you have it perpendicular to your carabiner, you go faster. But if you hold it up like this, parallel to your carabiner, you it actually slows you down. See? A stop and go mode. Take a bite off the rope through the big hole and then you twist it one full twist clockwise and then through the little loop and clip it on your carabiner lock it now when you completely let go you stop it stops you but if you take your left hand and move it down you go stop and go this is the phoenix it is offers a 45 kilonewton load strength so it's about twice as strong as most carabiners and descenders uh, it has lots of arms for frictional adjustment throttling and other rigging styles to use as a descender i can pass a bite through clip in and lower. I can adjust friction. I can also use it as a top anchor. I can use these three holes at the bottom for rigging, hauling, and other This is a scarab from Conterra. It's mostly used in rescue because it's heavy and clunky. But it's also stainless steel, so it's robust. It won't wear out. And the hybrid mini rack design allows it to absorb and distribute a lot of heat. Plus, get on and off rope quick without undoing your carabiner. Once you're at the bottom, step forward, off rope. This is the Hydrobot from Kong. It costs 50 plus dollars. It also uses the mini rack style, similar to the Scarab. Snap it onto your carabiner. This is a rack style opening gate. You thread a bite of rope through. It also has frictional adjustments. You can do one and two. One major advantage, it also offers a quick off rope. The rack is the most robust descender. It's big, heavy, and clunky, but it offers a long lifespan, especially in gritty conditions. It is also able to dissipate a lot of heat. It handles grit and high friction very well. To load up, push a bite through the adjustable rack. I can do both as well. And the closer the cylinders are together, the more friction you get, right? Yeah. So I can do less or more. 
Mm -hmm. And I can wrap around the arms for additional friction. Mm -hmm. And this descending device is also recommended by the caving community. This is the pestle stop. It is one of the recommended caving descending device by the caving community. Uh, reason being, it is great brake assist descending device. Uh, use single rope, friction adjust. It does not twist the rope. Great for heat dissipation on this metal here. Ease of locking off, getting on and off rope without having to undo your carabiner. So this is how you get on rope. You take the roll, make a S shape, and then you close it. And when you let your hand go, brake assist. And if you want to descend, this is an ATC, also called a tube style. This is a non-dedicated descender. It can be used for belaying, climbing, and many other uses. It's usable for descending, but it is not optimized. To load up, clip in both the rope and the wire strand, and you're on rope. Tension can be adjusted by pulling the brake strand. The disadvantages of the ATC are it offers nothing in the way of heat dissipation, so everything will be focused on your carabiner, so your gear will wear a lot quicker and can overheat, possibly singe the rope. There's also not much in the way of frictional adjustment or lock-off capability. What happens if I drop all my descenders down the canyon? Well, if that happens and you have no descending device left, guess what? You can repel off of a carabiner. All you need to do is make a monitor hitch, which you make two loop of the same orientation, and then you close them like a book, and then you clip it on the carabiner, lock it, it feels really weird repelling off this, but it's doable. Off I go.